It may come as a surprise that hypothermia could actually be a life-saving treatment. In fact, a new body cooling procedure can potentially help cardiac arrest patients return to a normal life. Joining me now is Dr. Shahid Hayat. He's a critical care specialist at the Pulmonary Consultants and Primary Care Group of Orange County. Welcome, Shahid. Thanks for having me, Larry. So this is a very interesting topic because cooling has been around for years, is that right? That's correct. Uh, the cooling has been around from a long time ago in, uh, in terms of Hippocrates. He had used cooling and uh, ancient Romans, uh, Egyptians and Greeks, they had used cooling as well to treat patients. So when anybody was injured, they would give? They, they would, would give the cooling yeah. and then they would see that the recovery time was less and they would have some neurological function preserved. But in 1950s, uh, there were some studies done in the U.S. as well, but the critical care was not that well advanced mm -hmm. uh, to progress it to any therapeutic or treatment options. So Shahid, how do you cool the body now? What, how, what are the modern ways of doing it? So there are a couple of ways to cool the body. Uh, in, the, in the emergency department, Larry, we start the patients on IV fluids, which are cold at four degrees uh, Celsius, intravenous, so intravenous uh, uh, fluid. That cools the body fairly quickly. Okay. But then we can have to give a lot of volume and it's not good. So we use surface cooling. Okay. So this is a, a modern technology that has become available to us. Mm -hmm. These are uh, gel pads. This is attached uh, to a machine. So this is the inside, how uh, the pads look from the inside it's on the patient's skin. As you can see, there are a lot of channels. This is connected to the machine, which okay. circulates cold water, runs through the tube into these channels, okay. and it provides cooling, a very effective cooling. Now this is applied on the body. It goes on the front, and this part goes in the back. There are four of these. One goes on this side, one goes on the other side, and then the two for the thighs, and provides very effective cooling. And we can maintain a very close, exact cooling temperature we want, because the machine can regulate the temperature where we want to keep. Okay, so the... And these are very comfortable for the patient as well. So, it, so the machine is kind of sophisticated because it has sensors in here for temperature right. and tells it where to put, right. cool the it, The right? sensor we place in the body's esophagus or in the urinary bladder, oh. and that also gets connected to the machine. So the machine is, knows what temperature the body is, where it wants to be, and provides a very effective and accurate cooling. So it's pretty sophisticated, right. actually. Sounds so it makes the job easier. Yeah. And uh, are there other ways to cool it, like with a helmet or with a... Right, we can put ice packs mm -hmm. and we can put a helmet as well, but that interferes with our hemodynamic monitoring mm -hmm. if we have to do neurological checks or EEG. I see. And this provides very effective cooling. And, and most of the hospitals, Larry, these days use the surface cooling for um, mild hypothermia. Okay. So. The normal body temperature is 98.6, and you're going to get mild gets it down to about what? About 90, 92 degrees. 92 right. degrees. And going it down into the 80s, is that more effective? Right. The studies have been done to see because if cooling is better, then more cooling should be better, as with a lot of other things. But the studies have shown that if you cool the body below 90 degrees, it can even have harmful effects. So okay. it is not therapeutic. So we try to keep it, which is termed mild hypothermia. 90, 92 degrees. If they have prolonged CPR, do you cool them for a longer period of time, or is it kind of a standard time that you cool them? It is a standard time that yeah. we use. After the cooling is started, we keep this on for 24 hours. So the patient's temperature, 90, 92 degrees, is kept for 24 hours. So we need to get to that temperature fairly quickly. So we try to get them within four hours down to that temperature. Okay. But we have a window of only six hours to start the cooling process after the CPR has been initiated. I see. And then the warming process is quickly or is it very slow? The warming process is a very tricky, tricky. Uh, process. So we have to go very slow. A lot of complications can happen in the warming process. So we go by 0.25 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. every hour. Okay. So that might take four hours up to 10 hours of warming. Now, do the, you know, the patients are unconscious, right? You, you sedate them, and do they shiver or feel pain? What, what do you that do? Is, that's a good question. What do the patients feel? A lot of times, especially in the audience, patients may be feeling if I go through it, will I feel anything? So first of all, the patients are comatose, but we do provide continuous intravenous sedation okay. and continuous intravenous pain medication during this whole hypothermia process. And as the body temperature is cooled down, body's natural response is to generate heat by shivering. Okay. They want, the body wants to keep the temperature higher. And that's a problem for us and okay. for a patient because patients can feel pain and uncomfort oh, okay. when they're shivering. 
So for that, we give them Demerol, a medication we use, and even then, if it doesn't help, we can paralyze them. Um, and then the reason we also want to be aggressive with shivering is that it delays our cooling process, and cooling process is very important to get down to your cooling pro uh, temperature as soon as possible. Now this doesn't save the heart, it doesn't save the lungs, it doesn't save anything but, but the, the brain, brain, which is... That's good. correct. Can, so can you use this when people have had strokes or traumatic brain That's a good brain point. Injury? And actually there are 19 randomized control trials going on at this time to evaluate that very specific question. But as of now, the American Heart Association has recommended to use mild hypothermia, which is called mild therapeutic hypothermia, only for cardiac arrest patients okay. with ventricular fibrillation rhythm or any other rhythm, okay. but not recommended for stroke patients or traumatic brain injury patients at this time. So uh, we're almost running out of time, but quickly, if somebody has, um, has a cardiac arrest and you start CPR right away and they get their heart rate back and their blood pressure back and they wake up in five minutes, does this help them at all? No. Not at all, no. because we are trying to preserve brain function. If somebody has shown that they already have preserved brain function, you can just talk with them, they can follow commands, and they are awake. So this process is not going to help them. Okay. So we do not use it on those patients. It's only recommended for patients who are comatose and have not neurological recovery at that okay. point. And just one last question. So you're not going to apply this during CPR when patients still do not have a heart rate or a blood pressure and they still have an abnormal rhythm. This is only after uh, you establish an, a blood pressure and a normal heart rhythm, right? That's correct. Okay, That's and correct. then you apply it. Right. It's only for out of hospital, return of spontaneous circulation within 60 minutes. Okay. And if they have no neurological function, then mild hypothermia might preserve the neurological function and may have returned to normal. And the chance of returning to normal, if you say, same patient, if you use this hypothermia and, and a cardiac arrest patient, same situation, who doesn't use it, what is it? More than half, more 55% than half. or even more Improved chances it. that they might have a meaningful recovery. That's dramatic. It's, I mean, you think it's like a, a simple, it's not really simple because the machine's sophisticated, the treatment that you give is sophisticated, but the idea of cooling the body has such a dramatic improvement in your neurological function, it's uh, amazing. This was a fantastic conversation. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. It was wonderful. I learned a lot myself. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Larry.